Hi, my name is Benedict. Uh, it's been a little while since I've done one of these. I've uh, been busy doing the uh, the refills. Uh, there was Sandbank 88 and then Thoughtfulness. Uh, thanks, Big thanks to Slava. If you haven't uh, already listened to Slava's track, um, Visions of Future World, well, a wonderful Ukrainian accent. Um, Thanks again, very publicly, because uh, you did just like such a superb job. You, you really delivered exactly what I was hoping that people would hear. My um, electronic body music, my EBM industrial, obviously is not quite that sound these days because I've got a more, far more delicate touch with what I do, and you just <laughs> superb. So this video, this one's not going to be one of those direct do this, not that I ever do that, I'm very much the thinking guy. Remember the title you just saw? Uh, it's about how and why. Uh, the main focus of this is going to be in that I'm seeing, and I'm dealing very directly with one person about this at the moment, um, but it's not pointed at you, if you think that it's about you. Unless, of course, that amuses you, then it's all about you. Uh, because I keep seeing this in, in lots of places. Um, and not just in music, too. You know, out on Fiverr, trying to make a living. Uh, and the, the things that I run into there is just like, this is your real problem. And I'm not going to say I don't have a similar problem myself. This is how I can speak to it. So, the problem is... People have an idea, a thing they want to express, a story they want to tell, or well, that word story, uh, and then they find lots of ways to back off it. Now, there's this whole idea that came, I'm not exactly sure where and when, and there will always be elements of this, but it really took over somewhere 20 or so years ago, and now it completely dominates people's thinking so much they don't even realise that it's there. There's this idea that within, say, music circles, if somebody has a hit, then someone else will dissect it. They'll make their YouTube video and sit here, kind of like me, and go, but this is how you do that. And then somebody else will, or that very same person, will give the impression that if you do exactly that, then you will get exactly that result. And one of the problems is that this is backwards, person wrote their thing, worked with maybe a record producer, maybe a mix engineer, maybe, maybe not. But they did their thing, they put it out there. It had a story. There was something about it that people connected with. Whether I would have liked it or not, people connected with it. Shake it off, shake it off, as far as I'm concerned, it's drivel. But people connect with that, so up the charts it went. Fair enough. People then think, oh, if I can get exactly the snare sound, if I can get exactly the kick sound, if I can get exactly the same kind of auto-tuning or whatever, I don't know whether it's auto-tuned, don't, don't, don't care. But if I can get exactly the whatever technical things, parameters, were in that song and put them down in my song, that I will get the same outcome as Trailer Swift with, had with hers when she's like, it's wrong. It doesn't work that way. When Mozart was writing his um, Eine Kleine Nacht music, excuse my awful German, was he thinking the same thoughts as a musicologist who sat down and said, oh, look, wasn't he a freak? He used a suspended 28th chord there. And then he inverted it into a, you know, an, an unsuspended 49th. No. The guy just went, bing, bing. Oh, that sounds good. I'm going with that. That tells my story. The musicologist who came afterwards can define in technical or mathematical terms what Moza did, but if you ask those musicologists to write Mozart, guess what you get? It's not Mozart. And I've said this a few times in a few different places. In, I've written it and I've said it myself lots of times, but I've really got to push this back through. That mindset where we say, oh, well, if I get the right kick sound, the right snare sound, the right everything sound, that I must have a hit, is supremely, well, fucked in the head. Really, really bad thinking. Uh, because it doesn't work that way. When somebody's doing something, they just do what feels right. And the more they can connect with the what feels right, the more impressive that work will be. 
For any of you who know um, Vangelis, Vangelis, Chariots of Fire, 1492, Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner. Uh, people love that, and with good reason. You know what? When spoken to, when interviewed, the big V says he knows nothing about music. Yeah, maybe it may, maybe he's you know Pinocchio nosing a little bit because this guy knows a lot about music. But at the same time, if you watch him, and I just watched a, a video of him with one of his setups, I think it was an older one, and all kinds of weird push buttons and like three hundred volume pedals, rocker pedals that he uses to control to switch in and out sounds. The way the big V works when he writes music is largely straight through wherever, wherever the music gods lie, wherever those pieces of music exist before he puts them on CD. But he channels it straight from there, heaven, whatever, uh, through himself to... And out comes this amazing stuff. So it doesn't matter whether he says he can read music or understand how music should be done or not, whether that's a furphy. The reality is the guy can channel music. Now, other people think, oh, but I'm not as good as him. You know what? Many of the pop stars that we have and many of the really cool records that I have in my collection down there, five crates of vinyl and equivalent in CDs stored in a box over there, many of those people, I can tell you, are not Mozart. But they had a compelling idea and they put it down. So the difference is, and you might be thinking, when's Benedict going to get to the point? I've already passed the point. The point is that as long as you're thinking, oh, is this the right kick? Is this the right snare? You are completely going in the wrong direction. There is no right kick. There is no right snare. There is, however, getting that idea from the song gods to here and then back out to the speakers. And the only way to do that is to connect as well as possible to upstairs, wherever those things come from. And you cannot do that when you're thinking right snare, right kick drum, right anything. Gary Newman wrote a lot of his earlier songs, and Gary, if you don't know him, and you bloody well should, Gary Newman is considered one of the great pioneers of bringing electronic music into rock music down in the park. Um, our friend's electric. And he wrote a lot of that early stuff on his Mars piano. There wasn't a wire, a cable in sight. He took his ideas and he put them down. And then he worked out how to turn them into what we've got on vinyl today. With the advent of the door, this thing you're seeing on screen here, we've changed to think a lot, and, and that's really unfortunate, because we now go, before we've even formulated or understood that idea, before we've connected with that idea coming from the song gods, we're straight into the, is it the right snare sound? And, and I really feel sorry for the song gods because they're there trying to go <laughs> and being ignored. And then, of course, we're going, well, why is no one listening to me? Because you've got nothing to say. Because all you're doing is trying to hand off what you think is right, which is wrong because you didn't listen to the song gods. And the song gods are, are not anyone you know. They are quite literally out there, beyond, quantum realm, whatever, however you want to define that. Angels, aliens, leprechauns, nobody who you have seen on YouTube. That includes me. I'm not a song god. I am the guy who tries to listen to them and tries to take what they have to say to me and put it here to get it here. So, when you come up with the idea for a song, and by song, I mean a piece of music. I don't write songs. No, not anymore, anyway. I, I used to, but those days are over for me. I don't feel it. Um, then I try to be as open as possible to whatever that is. Now, I keep putting my hands above my head because this is not a thing we can define. 
I do not turn on YouTube and say, what's Andrew Wang doing today? I avoid that like the plague that it is. I will maybe play with my instruments as I was playing with this. Oop, it's not connecting. That's not very interesting. Uh, but I was playing with one of my synth sounds. Oh, hang on, I think I worked out why. Yes, there we go. Came up with a sense of, oh, that's going to be a nice sound. I like that. And then came up with a sense of, well, what am I going to do? And by trying to stay as clear to that as possible, no sense of what's right, merely what does it want to be, I ended up with a piece. And it is four and a half minutes long. Let me play you this piece. Now, I'm not going to play this to you in a way that you necessarily expect. So pay attention, please, from the word go. There we go, that's my song. And you're probably going, what about the other, you know, almost four and a half minutes of this piece of music? You know what? There isn't any more. Yeah, I'm not being a smartass. Well, I am, but I'm not. Because if we were talking about Mozart, there is nothing in this piece of music at all. Let me just move this so it's not covered by my head. Z. This is this is the music. Bew, 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 bew. That's it. We're all over. Out, done, finished. That there is my whole piece of music. That is the musical idea. I got that down and I felt good about it. Where has that got to go from now? I could tell it actually just wanted to go again. So, guess what? We did it again. But rather than taking the lazy route and putting it exactly where it was before and looping it and creating what I said to somebody earlier today, an ice pick to the ear, I moved it around so that just as people make filter sweeps and wiggles to make their sounds interesting across so many minutes, I made a wiggly worm out of my three or four notes. There you go. Now, this is where people get confused because they think, oh, but I have to do all this other extra stuff. I have to get technical because my idea, and that's my whole idea, right there. Oh, but my idea, it has to have this and it has to have that and it has to have the other and it has to this. Forget has to. Throw away has to. The reality is, if that's all this was meant to be, you know what, I could finish it up at that and it would sound great. And save everybody another four minutes of their lives. But this one's, it wants to be developed. So, we let it develop. Let's pick up. <laughs> Notice little tiny variations in the notes. It was like, ooh, we put some extra ones in there, exciting. But that's that's just me going, well, where does this want to go? Technically, if I went to, well, what would Mozart have done? Then there are various other rules and this, that, and the other, and somebody can come along after me and go, oh, but Benedict, you used a one of these. You could have been more clever and he used a one of those. But you know what? As far as I'm concerned, this is the idea, and it wanted to go there. So it did. Right or wrong? Leave that to some other idiot. Other things came later, and you can hear them coming in, but I wanted something else. It was like, yep, this is going to need some more. So this is what I did next. <laughs> So 
So that's again really one idea. So I have two ideas in my piece, that and that. That's it. That's, that's my piece. Now these two ideas are actually surprisingly close to each other because they're relying on this close progression of notes. So this is actually a simplification of the first idea. It's just going, well, I can express it this way now. I wasn't thinking that at the time, but that's what came out. So the, the Song Gods gave me two ideas which are actually different ways of expressing the same idea. Synonyms, similes. I then extrapolated that because it's got to move. Remember, it's got to become a wriggly worm rather than an ice pick. Initially, I was trying to make this go under here. It didn't go. It just didn't go. But that's just me making the mistake of trying to tell the song gods where their bits should go. Once I pulled that out and put it here, Sing was like, it doesn't work there. It's really messed up. The idea had come for a reason, so I put it out here and just checked the transition from... And if that wasn't bloody lovely, then we're just not trying. So it, that's where it needs to be. So I'll put that there. Extrapolate it out to give it some time. And the rest is just duplicates. I then took this idea here, expanded it in time, only by saying, okay, now those eight or 16 bars, whatever they were, I'm now gonna make it longer. I'm gonna turn it into the eight bars into 16 bars. This here is actually, if we look at this, sequence. Uh, let's see if we can move that so you can see it a bit better. There we go. This here, these notes here. We've got our low, our low C, our root note, a couple of moving chords, really simple stuff. Uh, and if we go to this here, which you'll also see repeated elsewhere. Let's expand it out just a little bit. Oh, really hard, my head's in the way. But nonetheless, we've got a couple of C's down the bottom here under my head. And then these are just the top notes to this. There's no new material there. So I did end up with exactly what I was hoping to achieve in the first place as I started making what became this section. But I just needed to use a reduced version here. Easy enough for me to say, a little harder when we're listening to the song gods because they don't speak English. Nor do they speak Italian or Indian or anything. They speak music. It's up to us to interpret it. And the less we're speaking English, the more we're able to interpret it. That is actually my whole song. Now, a lot of people can start to get their idea down. They can start to put that little beginning bit, but then they really come unglued once they get to the what do I do next. Well, what do I suggest you do next? And this is not just a suggestion, this is how people do it. You don't go into trying to produce a finished piece of music. I know that's super popular in the door scene. But as time's gone by, and the more I've separated myself from doing it that way, I used to be very proud of how I started out, and I'd, you know, I'd have my first 15 seconds of music, and it sounded like a record. Okay, great. But I struggled to make the next five seconds worth of music. Not great. If you're a musician, you're supposed to be able to turn out music. 15 seconds or something that sounds like a record and then stops. <laughs> it's not music. It's not usable. You can't do anything with it. I do hear people putting these things online. You go to SoundCloud and you're starting to go, it's starting to go somewhere. You know, it's like we're listening to this for three minutes and we're starting to go, oh, and it just stops. 
<laughs> there's no fade out, there's no anything, it just stops. It's like, oh, well, that's where I ran out of ideas. <laughs> and that is super, super sad. I'm sorry for laughing, but it is super, super sad because it's really messed up. And that's an inevitable result of doing what I used to do when I started, which was to say, well, I'm now I'm going to perfectly produce this bit before I can do the next. Rubbish, rubbish. It's not how it's done. It is not how Stevie Nicks would write a song. Although, to be honest, Stevie Nicks often didn't do the music for her songs at all. She worked with a guitarist. So let's say her and Tom Petty are sitting there working out a song. How's this song going to go? She's going to start singing her lyrics, which I'm not going to do because, well, I'm not Stevie Nicks. Um, and Tom would go, strummity, 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 strummity. And all this chord work whilst you're doing the little, little bit. No, no. And they would make it work. Their process, I really don't know. doesn't matter. Not relevant. But they would not be sitting there going, oh, well, then we'll use this synthesizer preset here and we'll compress the snare drum like that. They never touched any of that discussion at all. I am 100% confident. 100%. What they would do is they would work out how does the song flow. So when you're singing that bit, Mr. Petty would probably go, yeah, look, I need to back off and let you, the, the lyric, really lead there. So it needs to be played this way. But this bit, yeah, we need to get a bit excitable. They would get what we might call the structure or the bones of the song down before they went anywhere. And the reality is, it's entirely possible, because I'm, I'm, I'd be stunned if Stevie can't play something, but there's a fair chance that she would turn up with at least her chords. She might do it on a piano or she might do it on a guitar. I really don't know what she can play. Um, so she might turn up going... There, whilst I sing the first bit. There, when I sing the second bit. There when I think sing the third bit. And Tom's going to go, okay, here's how we can make that work. The thing is, get the bones of your material down first. And you might think, oh, but, but that's not enough. No, of course it's not enough. Because if we heard what Stevie Nicks walked into that session with, and we compared to what went on record, you know, what's on our CD, then we're going to hear quite different things. But if the process is done correctly, if we put the two together, they should be recognisably the same thing. They may bring in other ideas and make changes and what have you along the way. Um, uh, Judas Priest's um, uh, Victim of Changes is actually two songs put together. It's Whiskey Woman and something or other else. Whiskey woman, don't you know you're driving me insane? <laughs> yes, if we took those two songs, but their parts would still be recognisable. Not if I sing it. I've got far too much hair to do a good Rob Halford. Um, so forget all this idea about, oh, but, but I'm going to need this. No, that's going to have to happen. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. But if you focus on it now, you're going to get bogged down in that detail. And then you're going to get caught up in the right snare, wrong snare kind of argument. And you won't get your thing finished. Get your idea down first. So lay out the whole thing. Now, you don't need to know whether there's going to be four bars of slash playing guitar or 16 bars of slash playing guitar. 16 bars of Slash playing guitar and then another 16 guitar bars of Eddie Van Halen playing guitar in the middle. You don't need to know that. So, and this is one of the wonderful things with the door world, you can simply say, okay, that will be my first verse here. That'll be my second verse. This will be my first chorus. This will be my third verse. 
and you keep going like that. Now, if you know that you're going to want a screaming guitar solo, then you can just leave the chords for it. If you are not a screaming guitar solo guy, you can just say, okay, there's my chord progression for that bit. I know that I'm going to want to move up to a hemi-demi um, semi-pentatonic thing there because it's going to be great, because that's what my story wants. Or you could quite literally not even bother putting it in. You could be, let's go backwards here, oh, get on the right screen. You could be, okay, this that's my chorus, here's my verse. I'll go into my next chorus. I know that there's going to be an instrumental come in here somewhere, but I'm not going to worry about that because that'll come in the development phase. For now, this song is going to work just fine without it, seeing I don't have my flying V in which I can go whittle, whittle, whittle. In which case, you can just ignore it and either go to your fourth verse or just sing your chorus to fade. If you're ready for the ad-libs, then you can put them in there as well. The oohs and the ahs and the oh yeah, and funky man, and whatever else is going to go in terms of ad-libs. But you shouldn't be fussed on those things. Just get the bones of it down. That's it. You don't have to worry about drums. Either have none, or if you kind of know what the drums are going to be, put in a drum machine. The number of songs that have been written with a drum machine by metal acts, rock acts, people who would never use a drum machine on their record or on stage, they can still be written with a drum machine. And you don't need some funky drummer patch <laughs> kind of stuff. That's just going to put you off course. Just need a boom cha, boom cha, boom cha, or boom, 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 enough to keep you in time. Because obviously, if you put the basics down and you're completely out of time, then it's going to be tricky later. So that gives you your metrogenome. Um, little guy in a red hat stands in the garden. Very reliable. You don't fuss about any of that stuff. You're just looking to... Here's my chords. Ooh, that's bloody brilliant. In it. In it. I write films, get awards. This is what you do. Once you have got those bones down, and for me in this piece, remember we started with that, and then that. Once I had those, I knew I had a piece. Quite literally, I knew I had a piece. Really, I knew I had a piece once I got that. Those first bow, 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 bow. That's it. Oh, and I've got a piece. That's going to be great. I love that. I didn't fight it. There was no sense of, oh, but then I'm going to have to... I let it come out. Yes, this bit initially, there was some fight, but that was my fault because I was trying to put it in the wrong place. But you know what? I wasn't trying to put it in the wrong place. I was just not understanding how it was going to be put there. Once I got those two things, the contrast, wonderful, great, let's develop it. But you don't do the developing until you've got those basics out. So you get your song, obviously... Hopefully, you've written the lyrics, or at least enough of them to be getting them out and down. You begin to set the scene. This is important. You know, if we put on Metallica's Into Sandman, we set the scene with them all. And then we've got... Oh, what's his name? Guy plays guitar, sings. Nice Lemmy. He starts singing, Exit Light! That really sets the scene. That's all you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get across what the feel of this piece is. Get that down. Now, from there, once you've got that idea down, honestly, you can do one of two things. If you have skills in developing, then you can take your, your bones, your structure, and start developing because you can see what's working, you can start to feel, oh, okay, this bit here, I can then do that with it, and that with it, and that with it, and that with it, and then I can re reuse these pieces here, and reuse this bit here, and basically extrapolate the whole thing out, and turn your couple of notes into four and a half minutes. If you don't have a lot of skill there, 
then you can either sit down and try and learn how to do it, or you can bring in somebody who does have that skill, which is what Stevie Nicks would do with Tom Petty, uh, with Wix, uh, with um, Lindsay Buckingham, um, with Mick Fleetwood. I don't know whether her and Christine McVie ever sat down and wrote songs together. Um, but you get my point, was that... Stevie Nicks, who is considered a great songwriter and, and, and a very impressive singer, like a great singer, um, didn't do much song development. She brought in somebody else to help develop her songs. She'd have the core, the, the bones of what her song was, and she had a very clear idea in her head what these songs were about, and then she'd bring in someone to develop. Obviously, that's something I do, for other people who have helped people develop songs and there are videos about it and what have you um, if you're not aware of them I can point you to them and there are some that you can't easily see on YouTube because they're invisible they're there and I can send them to you but they're just not there for anybody to find simply out of respect for the, the person who I did it with um, often because I was waiting for them to release their version and I, I didn't want to tread on their toes um, so you can then hand over, either by having yourself in the same room as them, you come in in your nicest Stevie Nicks frock and sit down next to your uh, nicest Tom Petty and the two of you talk it through. How are we developing this? What's this about? What's the feel? Or you send it off and it's the same thing where the person, if they know what they're doing, and please don't just go with somebody who's going to go, oh, well, now I will assign the right kick drum and the right snare. <laughs> I had someone come to me recently on, on YouTube, and this is actually quite hurtful, I've got to say, uh, and very tragic all round, in that I'd offered to mix songs for him. It does a kind of art rock, and I, I like where he's going with it. It's interesting, and it's outside of the, you know, rule book for the moment but he's frightened of that and he wants it to be inside the rule book but you know what his songs don't want to be in that rule book they're not formula post rock he's doing a kind of art rock of himself which is great and i offered to mix something for him but he declined and he said he didn't want to spend the money he couldn't afford to spend the money i would have at most charged him 150 dollars for a mix of his cool, complex work, because I wanted to put it in my portfolio. That would be the most I would have charged him. I may have charged less, but that would be the most I would have charged him. He then comes back to me and asks for my advice on how to, what he should be doing with his mix. He wasn't completely upfront with me as to what was happening when he came back. He'd gone and spent $599 on some guy who rabbits on about how he's got a studio and all this work. Yes, he's got a big portfolio of work, this guy. And every single song sounds the same. Every single song, no matter what genre, it doesn't matter whether you choose his pop, his rap, his rock, and he puts rap first, and you can tell, they all sound like bad rap mixes. They're all compressed to buggery. There's no feeling left in them. They are just loud and flat as a piece of paper that was dropped in water. There's no feel to them whatsoever. So why this guy hired him, I have no idea. Especially seeing he wouldn't hire me for 150 when it had been $600 on someone else who brutalized his track. And it was a real shame because it was a delicate track and it needed a delicate touch. And straight away, as soon as I start listening to it, I'm thinking, what were you doing with this bass? I thought this guy had mixed it himself because normally he does his own mixing. And I'm thinking... What YouTube tutorial were you watching when you decided you were going to mix this bass? Because it was lumpy as a mofo. And if it was supposed to, to back some kind of mofo, then maybe it'd be all right. But you know, within this song, it absolutely did not belong there. He'd overridden everything that the song gods had given him with this garbage and was asking me how it should be fixed and then the story starts to come out about having gone to somebody else no he wasn't really that happy and you know what this is messed up choose the people that you work with carefully to make sure that they are going to be able to honor your thing so if i were to take this piece 
which is, you know, reasonably subtle. Let's listen to some more musical break. <laughs> how that's really subtle and and I do kind of specialize in having this really delicate sound it's not a thing I set out to do but I, I realize now that that's what I do I have a I have a very definite sound um fine but if I took that to somebody who specializes in having a completely different sound let's for example pick Bob Rock we're gonna pick on Bob Rock I like Bob Rock Bob Rock's done some great work Metallica's black good work it fades towards the rest of the record, but you know, in terms of getting them on into the top ten spot, Bob Rock did some brilliant work with them. Um, 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 bon Jovi, "Slippery When Wet," I believe that's a rock thing mix. Brilliant, absolutely wonderful. It's just relentless. But you know what? It's great work, and it got him all over the charts, and it's good work. But let's say I took that what you just heard to Bob Rock, and I said, "You got to make this sound like Bob Rock." Would I be honouring my song? No. Now, if Bob was any good, he would actually say to me, um, Benedict, not sure why you're here, mate. And you know what? He'd be, he'd be right. Because me and classic Bob Rock, we don't go together. So, back to where I was going. Either learn to develop it yourself which if you're already struggling with that sense of shoulds, the right snare, the right this, and I have to <laughs> copying somebody else's song, then you're not the right guy for it yet. You've got to train yourself out of that, and that's going to take a little while. Then go to somebody who can help you develop it. You take the clear idea, and you check to see if they can pick up your idea. If you've got your idea down right, and by right I don't mean right snare, right anything, I mean your idea is right. If they're the right person for you, they're going to repeat your idea back to you. Wow, when you go exit light into night, man, that's like... I could Bob Rock that. That makes for a good match. If, they, if you hand over that stuff and the guy comes back and says, you know, when you said... Exit light, what did you mean? Or, yeah, why don't you sing that more like Eminem? Then you go, yeah, thanks for your time. I'm off to find Bob Rock. Really important. You are telling a story and the elements have to match up and the person who tells the story has to understand it. Now, the thing is, just like with Stevie Nicks and Tom Petty working together or whoever Stevie's working with, they put themselves in the position to understand that. The more professional a song developer is, the more they're able to understand how things work. Genre is a non-thing. Tom Petty, if you go through his stuff, yes, he's mostly a rock guy, but he did some very cool electronic songs. Very cool electronic songs. How they got to be that way, I don't know. Did he stuff himself? Did he pay somebody in a studio to do the keyboardy shit for him? Who cares? It's his song. He was able to get that done. His vision worked really well. So don't think there's only one person or only one way. And definitely don't think you're the only person who can deliver your song. If you can tell your story, anyone who has any experience can help develop it. Now here's the great thing. Even if you're going to develop this yourself, once you've got that bones of the song down, the story is there, and the sense of what the scene it's in, it will be so much easier to develop, even for you, because you now have a stronger sense of what that is, and because you've put the whole thing down, it's now outside of you somewhat. I did struggle with this for a little bit. How do I develop that? So I just keep stepping away from it. Ooh, what's going on on the internet? And come back. Try to put myself back into that. Probably did too much of the what's on the internet. I even let this sit for a week. I'd started this, and then I went and finished another track. 
and came back to this, which is unusual for me. Normally I don't leave anything sit, but I knew I had that other thing out there. And I thought, look, I, I, I think I need to finish that one first before I actually extrapolate this. So I had my, um, well, I actually had that. No, I'd, I'd gone out to that. So I had that, which was really, as we say, just that. And it was when I came back that I started doing that. But once you've got your basic idea down, then you can come in, or anyone who is skilled, and I don't mean skilled at delivering that snare sound, I mean skilled at helping deliver your story, can help you develop that. If you've only got part of your idea down, and you haven't got a strong sense, and you don't believe in your scene and the story that you're telling, no one can help you, and you definitely cannot help yourself. So now this is a bit sort of all over the place, but again, let's just go around in circles here. Get your idea out. Your idea has got nothing to do whether it's the right snare or not. It's just your idea. Get that story from the song gods to here to there, as simply as possible. Simply as possible. Don't care what sounds you use, it can be any sounds. You've just got to get that impression, that feeling of what this is going to be. Get it down. Believe in what you've got. Allow yourself to step away from it. It's now outside of you. It now has an existence all on its own. Just as Abba's Dancing Queen has an existence all on its own outside of Abba. Because it exists. It's become its own thing. It exists. It, it, it's almost has as much soul as a as as an animal. You know, it's a unique identity. Once you've got your song down as as your as its bones, it has started to develop its own identity, which means it's easier for you to see it and understand what's needed. Then once that's done, then you can come in and either say, look, I can develop this and pick those ideas and and start working it up. But please never think is this the right snare? based on somebody else's ideas, because that's a great way to lose. It is the equivalent, as I said, of me taking this track to Bob Rock, saying, you've got to make it sound like Eminem, say. And he's going to go, this isn't Eminem, and did you notice I'm Bob Rock? I'm like, you know, Bon Jovi and Metallica, dude. And this is not like any of it. Stay within what your track's about and either develop it yourself or step aside and find somebody who understands your song and a bit more about how to develop a song than you do. Don't cross. Don't go grabbing somebody who's not a good fit. As I said, just like me taking this to Bob Rock to mix and make it sound like Eminem would be a terrible fit. It's, it's, it's a double mismatch. Find people who, are, who it's going to be a good match with. Who would I match this with? I don't know. I always say Alan Parsons, Connie Plank, mixed um, craft work and some Ultravox. Um, Giorgio Moroder, of course, uh, is a possibility. Lots of those kinds of guys would be the people who would be a good obvious match. If none of them were around or alive, Ivor Davies of Ice House. I'm very confident I could put this in front of Ivor Davies of Ice House and say, Ivor, help me develop and mix this, and we'd get a good result. But if I went to Ivor and he said, yeah, mm, and everything he fed back to me didn't match, I'd go, thank you. Thank you for your, all the pleasure I've had from your records, and I'd go find someone else, or I'd do it myself. So get the bones down then work out how to develop it. It'll be significantly easier to develop when that song started to get an identity of its own through being out in the real world. All this stuff about right kick drums, right snare drums, right genre things, they are all a steaming pile of poo that will do nothing but stick to your shoe and stop you from getting the job done. Now, if you have any questions, try for them in the box. Politely, of course, please. Uh, and of course, if you're hearing this and you're thinking, wow, I, I, I really want to get some of that, ask if I'll work with you. I do not like working for free. I'm sorry if that offends you, but this is how I actually feed my family. This is how I 
keep myself here, how I can afford to actually stay on the latest version of Reason. Uh, so there's got to be something that you can do for me if I'm going to do a whole lot of stuff for you. You have a great night, Nick.